Now, first things first, it's a new hero. We'll look at the other functionalities a little bit later, but let's start with this one, Maiev. Maiev is the warden from the Warcraft universe. And let's just go straight into it without uh, much delay. We're going to turn off the enemy hero and we're just going to kind of chill. We're going to turn off the minions. So it's just Maiev. So Maiev has a standard movement speed of 100% and I noticed that you can't press C anymore to open the character screen. Instead, there is a new UI functionality where you can left click and here in the top left, you'll get a UI window and you can move it around with a drag and it shows someone's HP, their regeneration per second, movement speed, spell power, attack speed, basic attack range, attack damage, physical armor and spell armor. You can move this around at will and have it where you want. In order to remove this, you can left click anywhere else on the map. This also works on the target dummy, it works on the healing dummy, it does not work on the healing dummy, it works on siege camps, towers, gates, as you can see, keeps, fountain, everything. So this is really cool. I would say it's a little bit overdue, but it's important uh, not to not to be too pessimistic about those things. It would have been nice to have it from the beginning. Yeah, you can't read it. Donation overlay is covering it. That makes sense. So I can just put it right here uh, and then everyone can see it easily. So there you go. You see, that's really cool new functionality. And in doing so, myself and many of, uh, of the rest of us, we can become more proficient at the game. We can learn more information about the game because now it's much easier without having to data mine. Uh, yeah, maybe here is a good place. Without having to data mine everything, we can find out the value of things. Quite nice. I have 561 damage. This tower has 562 damage. I now know it's a double hit instead of a single hit. So this is good to know. Now, Mayev. Mayev is the newest hero to the Nexus. Went on the PTR on Monday, the 29th of January, the public test region. And she should be out coming Tuesday on what date? February the 6th in NA and February the 7th in Europe. So, her basic attack damage at level 1 Choose a talent. is... 168 and a half. I am we can... watching. I am watching. Cool. Um, okay, so she has, of course, her abilities and her traits. So let's take a look at it. Fan of Knives is a crescent moon shaped skill shot that has the middle of its skill shot area at the threshold of the range of it. As you can see, even if you aim very close to target dummy, it can miss. All right, so it is very forgiving on the flanks. It's forgiving on the outside part, let's say, the front part. But it's kind of a narrow bezel that is easy to miss even on something that's right in front of you. You should aim on the target and you'll have some residual damage on the side as well. It's an interesting skill shot shape that we don't really have yet. The thing that comes closest is Tyrael Smite. Umbral Bind is an auto attack reset. That was two auto attacks. It's an auto attack reset. That means that right as you auto attack, when that one procs, you can press W and you immediately get your second hit in. This is always we nice for melee assassins. Now, the shape of Umbral Bind is as follows. But as you press Umbral Bind, Umbral Bind something doesn't happen immediately. You will supercharge your next auto attack according to this shape. It is now charged up. On to the next now, when you attack something, it attacks in, in a swath, in the cleaving damage of the same shape that you saw me just hovering. Any hero type hero that you hit, or if you hit something else that's near a hero, but you still manage to hit it with that, they get a tether to them. In other words, if this is a hero and there is a minion here and I hit the minion because because he is within that range as well, that sw swath, that cleave, they'll get a tether. Okay. Everyone that gets tethered will for two and a half seconds be tethered. And in that time, when they go outside of your purple area, purple, greenish, either you go outside or they go outside, they'll get pulled towards my F 
and at level 1 it will deal 114 damage, breaking the tether. This will happen once, so I'll show it. And it will pull about that distance. Even if I go through a portal or I use some kind of teleportation, it will go about that distance. It won't take you all the way somewhere else. So it's Let's good to know. Go. Now, her E is kind of like Sylvanas's Banshee, except it returns after a short delay. When it goes out and when it comes back, it deals 104 damage per route. And it's double damage to enemy heroes. You can reactivate it at any time to blink. It can be a short range blink. And we're just going to reset the cooldowns in order to have our spell casting more often without trouble. Or you can do it at the very end. Or you can do it as you almost returned. Another thing that you can do is you can move while that thing is traveling. So you can also throw it, mount up, start running, and then show up somewhere else. The possibilities already feel fairly infinite. Now there's a combo in her basic abilities that means that if you umbral bind someone and you blink away, that's an easy way to proc the tether. I'm going to choose my enemy heroes as the Lost Vikings. To show off how it works with multiple enemy heroes. Any other displacement of Maiev should also proc Umbral Bind. It's the act of leaving each other's range that procs it. All three enemy heroes will get pulled. And it's only upon the pooling that they deal damage. Until then, no extra damage is dealt. Greetings, friend. Now we will look at her trait. And we're going to disable enemy heroes for now. No, we don't have to. That's now fine. Is the time. Her trait is Vault of the Wardens. Cool down 8 seconds. Leap into the air, becoming immune to all hostile effects for 3 quarters of a second. Also... She has a passive 15 armor. We could see this when we click her already, remember? That's both types of armor, and this is a passive. This raises her effective health to something that you could calculate if you were of that mind. But mostly what that means is that Swiftly. percentage and true damage still bypasses armor. That's one. So Dykes and Malthiel relatively slightly more effective against her. And secondly, and maybe more importantly, it makes healing more effective on her. Because if she takes a thousand damage, she takes less than a thousand. But gain a thousand heals and you'll gain exactly that. Vengeance will not wait. And this is how the Vault of the Warden look. That's a three quarter second jump. You can do it while moving. It doesn't seem to increase or decrease your movement speed. And that means if Lucio is speeding you up, it'll be quite a spectacular circus jump for the most part. Can you go over walls with it? The answer is no. You'll path exactly like how you would pass when you path over the ground. You can't go over heroes either, I imagine. You can. You can go over heroes, but not terrain. And when you land on someone, you get displaced in the direction that you were most facing towards. Let the hunt begin. All right. Can you humble Bright and then jump? The answer is yes. So they cannot stun or root you to prevent you from getting out of range. Alright, now let's look at some talents. But first, let's look at the heroics. Because then we'll have dealt with all the Choose abilities. The Heroic Choose number one is Containment what Disc. It has a 65 second cooldown and you'll throw a glaive in a target direction. If an enemy hero is hit, it's a skill shot. Containment Disc can be reactivated to remove their vision and time stop them for 4 seconds. It doesn't do any damage, they will not have vision, much like the Haka's Isolation. And also, if you don't reactivate it, after 6 seconds, they will get automatically activated. This is how it looks like. And this is the thickness of it. Here's the 6 second timer, and here it is as well. When I press R again, it activates. I cannot prematurely end it, by the way. I am the 
It will last the full four seconds once it happens. Now let's take a look at the other heroic. Choose a talent. Choose a talent. Warden's cage. I am watching. This is the size of it. And this is what happens. One and a half second delay, eight warden avatars are summoned as a cage around my ev. When anyone comes into contact with one of these avatars, the avatar is consumed and they'll knock them back to the center of the stage. It doesn't deal any damage and the warden avatars last for seven seconds. Now let's take a look at how that looks. On, on Heras. It looks like people that enter from the outside will also get pushed to the middle. So it's not a mono-directional prison. Because I don't have cooldowns, I can summon many and I can play ping pong with vikings. Some may say this is racist, but vikings don't mind, they're not real people. It's quite funny, but it's try mode only. Will not now let's take a look at a talent. uh talents we'll put ourselves on level 20. <laughs> choose a talent choose a talent we'll put ourselves on level 20. now is the time now a fan of knives by the way has an interaction where if you hit at least two enemies with fan of knives it reduces the cooldown from four seconds all the way to half a second and it wouldn't have cost any mana Greetings, friend. that's without any talents on it i am watching now i have toggle cooldowns now Greetings, true friend. cooldowns i miss grub. <laughs> grub happy so the vikings uh, are are pretty hard to hit because they keep moving <laughs> that was two one. Let the hunt begin. Why, why are you doing this, Vikings? Okay, I need to umbral bind them. Let anyway, it's true. Believe me, we did it once. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Well, I've shown it twice. No need to show off and make everyone feel bad. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now, talents. <laughs> Bonds of justice. Each tether applied to a secondary target of umbral bind. Stop laughing, guys. Uh, increases umbral binds pull damage by fifteen permanently. Secondary target. So you always need to have two minimum to make this quest work. After five tethers to secondary targets. The pull damage is increased by another 75. And after 10 tethers, Umbral Bind's cleave damage is improved by 30%. Right now, the cleave damage of Umbral Bind is 241. My auto attack damage, 355. So it'll roughly bring my cleave damage in line with the damage of my auto attack. Just about. And it looks like this has no roof, no cap of damage. But really, realistically, how many... Wait, uh, two enemy heroes. Well, that would be a bug, Radish Hat. Secondary includes a minion, but it says two heroes. You mean for fan of knives? Oh, secondary tether. Swiftly. You don't need to do it on two heroes, but it says secondary tether. Cleave damage means when you hit with W, 241 is pull, yeah. He can hit a minion with W and pull the hero. Okay. Alright. That wasn't obvious to me. Oh, okay. Secondary means not the person you hit. Okay. So you just go, you make sure that your cleave does hit a hero, but he wasn't the one you targeted. The person you didn't hit with the auto attack. Clear. Thank you, guys. Now, 
Next one, Pursuits of Vengeance. Each hero tethered by Umbral Bind reduces the cooldown of Spirit of Vengeance by one and a half seconds. Spirit of Vengeance has a 10 second cooldown. So if you hit one with Umbral Bind, you tether one with Umbral Bind, it's eight and a half. If you tether two, seven seconds. Naisha's Memento. This is the one I find most interesting. Choose a talent. Naisha's Memento will be activated to have an eight second period, during which time your auto attack bounces to two additional enemies. And your secondary auto attacks Let's deal go. more damage. Activating it, we'll see that our first does 355, and the next is 462, 462. Since my auto attack speed is 1.1, and it lasts for eight seconds, the maximum amount without bonus auto attack speed is that I get nine procs out of it. Vengeance now in order to get it back, I need to hit at least two heroes with a single fan of knives. And as I just showed you that before, that's exceedingly easy, Kappa. Very strong. Imagine with lifesteal, it will proc three times. All right, now let's take a look at the next talent. At level four. Hit three enemy heroes with a single fan of knives. The reward, fan of knives damage goes up by 15%. If you hit again three enemy heroes with a fan of knives, it keeps going up an additional 5%, up to 30, for a total bonus of 45% damage. If you ever hit four enemy heroes, you get all rewards instantly. Go all the way to the 45%. At level 20, my fan of knives deals 395 damage. So you can get about 580 damage at the max at level 20, if you get all the rewards. Just about. Now, in try mode, completing quests never really works properly. Um, not, not well enough anyway. And that means that if I do the complete quest, after picking it, it only gives me 30% bonus damage instead of the bonus 45. So don't try this in try mode. Choose a talent. Try it in a real game. Vengeance Choose a talent. Now, Blade Dance. Using Fan of Knives deals 118 physical damage to enemies around my F. At the level 4 mark. Greetings, friend. This Choose is 63. 63 Let bonus physical damage begin. when you do a Fan of Knives. Now, Fan of Knives itself right now does 211. It's a little bit more than a 25 bonus damage, 25% bonus damage. However, that's physical. And that means it will be procced by block. Block will be procced when you cast this. I tested it. Oh, 30% is the max. I misunderstood it. Right. It may be. Okay, so it's like, okay, because it's like a separate reward, I understood the first time it's 15, and then another 5 up to 30. 30 plus 15, but they mean up to 30 total. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, that's my brain. It works differently, more stupidly, I guess. Okay, 30% max. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, it says up to 30 there, but it's a different paragraph. 15 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5. So a total of four separate procs of a triple hit or a single quadruple hit. Okay, it's good. It's good. You know that we're, we're smarter together. <clears throat> Not stupid. You're just special grubs. Thanks, mom. No worries. I thought it was 45% as well. Thanks. Makes me feel a lot better. Uh, Blade Dance. When you fan of knives, it does another 63 physical. And this gets blocked by block. Are you sure Blade Dance procs it? Yeah, I tried. People that have block. Like, Olaf has block, right? You'll see. Oh, I wasn't close enough. It didn't block. But, be, wait, maybe he doesn't, doesn't have it yet? Do we, do we summon an enemy with block? I tried this before and it worked. 
Who has always blocked? Sunset Johanna? Oh wait, Olaf didn't pick block. Okay, she has block. We have much work to do. See? I didn't auto. Sixteen. It works against blocks. Vengeance will not wait. It didn't trigger a hot pocket. So again, this procs block, that can be a good thing or a bad thing. But most of all, remember that this bypasses spell armor, way. spell shield, and so on. So it's a small damage increase. What is it? About 27% bonus damage when you're fan of knives. Now this is around my F. So even though I cast my crescent like this, Swiftly. it's around my F. So it has a different area. Hot block it. <laughs> it has a different area than fan of knives itself. So specifically when you blink in and you fan of knife something, it's just a nice little bonus damage around yourself in a slightly greater than burning rage area. So, you know, we'll see whether it's good later or not. This is just information, okay? Reset Choose talents. Choose and now talent. we go to sudden vengeance. If you use blink within a third of a second of spirit of vengeance hitting an enemy hero, it causes the shadow to explode. You damage all nearby enemy heroes, heroes only, for 5% of their max health. When this happens, you'll hear a heartbeat to let you give to give you an audio cue that it worked. I didn't pick the talent yet. Just testing you guys. It's just like Malthael's cue. Boom. And it can work on the way back too. Right? Yeah, works on the way back as well. Thump. Good sound. Okay, let's go on to the next level. Choose a talent. Choose a talent. Choose a talent. Eluence Wrath. Hitting at least two enemy heroes with a single fan of knives causes the next fan of knives to drop a star on targets that deals 169 damage when it impacts now we're at level 20 right now 169 base damage 395 okay this is about what 40 percent 45 percent something like that but it's on the next fan of knives so it's a little funky and it also doesn't need to be an enemy hero the next time you hit yeah she's a little bit more complicated definitely so we, we let the Vikings come out again. And we're going to try to hit that fan of knives on two targets. Okay, success. The reason that... The way that you can see it was success. First of all, you know how many people you damaged. But you saw little stars going out. Now the next time Let's I queue go. anything, whether it's a hero or anything else, and I don't think I have any marker, they get a star. Wait, where did it go? Here, here we go. Let the hunt begin. What? I didn't pick the talent yet. Choose a talent. <gasps> Mother trucker. Okay. <laughs> okay, done, done. Okay, now we can see that the Q. <laughs> Okay, now we can see that the queue is glowing and they'll get a star and you get a star and you get a star. <laughs> now it's 135 and that's because they have a spell armor, right? So that is Illune's Wrath. Choose a talent. Choose a talent. Choose a talent. Heard you had some lock picking trouble or something. Hope all is good. My F looks insane. <laughs> yeah, it's it's all good now. No trouble for someone as accomplished in the lockpicking arts as I. I played Daggerfall, Elder Scrolls 2, did I not? Dog of the Sea, thank you very much. <clears throat> now, next one. Enemy heroes pulled by Umbral Bind have their physical armor reduced. 
by 25 for 3 seconds. Now my current auto attack damage is 355. But I'm hitting for 444. Guess why? Because he's vulnerable to auto attacks. And we can even see that. This is his physical armor, right? Buggerful? Yeah, it was very buggy. Minus 25. Daggerful was so buggy. Remember getting stuck in a wall and you couldn't get out and you only had three freaking save files and you literally just ruined your whole campaign and your character because all your save files are in the freaking dungeon after you fell through the freaking wall? Anyway, sorry. <clears throat> so. And also vulnerable to the fan talent. Correct. Choose a talent. Choose a talent. Third talent. Ruthless spirit. Spirit of Vengeance damage is increased by 3% per minion merc or enemy summon hit and 24% per enemy hero hit. Choose right now, off. Spirit of Vengeance deals 219 damage. Double against heroes, of course, don't forget. And it deals more damage on the way now back. Is the time. We're gonna turn on minions to see this more or less to greater effect. And it topped out at 463 against minions. And it's already hitting 564 on Olaf there. Very nice damage. Great poke. Good wave clear and so on and so forth. And this is the level 20 values. Strong. But it doesn't kill minion by itself. But remember that if you combine it with fan of knives. You're going to do really good. Easy, easy, wave clear. Swiftly. Well, that was rather Okay, moving on to the next talent. We'll take Choose containment disc. Alright. Now level thirteen. Each enemy hero hit by fan of knives grants five armor time. for five seconds, up to twenty armor. So basically what that means is that it keeps refreshing every time you hit someone. And the first time you get 5 armor per hero. And it lasts for 5 seconds. Now the cooldown is 4. That means you're allowed to miss once. Because after all, if you, if you hit... Well, that's not entirely true, is it? No, you need to hit it every time within a 1 second frame. In order to keep it up. So, just showing. Um, I didn't pick it yet. That, that's kind of a trend. Okay, I now have 5 armor, and then I hit it again. 10 armor. 15. 20. And now you just need to keep hitting it once every 4 seconds. Now of course if you hit 2 players, that's a more comfortable reset, because you can do it again after half a second due to the cooldown reduction. Now, what is a little bit funky Vengeance is that it shows us 20 armor across the board, which is how the UI works. But because he has 15 basic armor, it's actually at 35, as you can see in the UI there. Remember? 35 each. Now, it is my opinion that because she has 15 physical armor and spell armor, both types, that it should always show plus 15 next to her name. The fact that there is no permanent armor UI next to her name is a little weird. Because anytime she gets a bonus, it gives the wrong value. And when people don't know her that well, or they cannot like go check everything out, they will think that 20 plus means 20 plus. But in fact, she's at 35. That's my opinion. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And remember, if you like this video, like and subscribe, follow, and also everything. Right? <clears throat> so yeah that's anyway that's my opinion but maybe they thought it's too clunky anyway what this means <laughs> uh, <clears throat> what this means is that you can have high uh <laughs> you can have a lot of armor all the time now all the other don't forget to hit that like button <laughs> yeah now what this means is you can have Extra armor all Choose the time. Now let's look, take a Choose look at the talent. other alternatives. Choose a talent. Tithering at least two enemy heroes with Umbral Bind 
grants 35 armor for 4 seconds. Let's go. So you have 50 armor for 4 seconds. And this comes at the period of time that you're essentially running away. I'm, I'm 50 now, but I didn't pick it yet. Choose a talent. <laughs> didn't pick it yet. We'll pick it now. Uh, sooner or later, they'll be together. Trust me. 35 it says, but actually I'm at plus 50, right? Now is the time. Okay, now uh, we try the final one. Choose a talent. Choose Shadow a talent. armor. After you blink, you get 25 armor for two and a half seconds for a total of 40. My have basic attacks against enemy heroes. Choose Refresh this duration. 40 armor, and I keep attacking. And I have 40 armor forever, so long as I can keep attacking. It's pretty good. Now, you can't always keep attacking in this game, but having 40 armor that long is pretty darn good. Okay. Now, now, let's take a look at level 16. At first, we're going to get a little bit of a complicated one. Cruel Chain. Umbro Bryant grants 25% movement speed for 2.5 seconds. In addition, each time Maiev deals damage to tethered targets, any kind of damage to any of the tethered targets, Umbro Bryant's pull damage to all targets is increased by 40% up to 200%. Okay. Vengeance will not wait. So I need to damage them. I need to pick Choose the talents first. Damage them and run away. And they crit 434 instead of what it should be, which is 241. Okay. So it can do a lot. But I only fan of knives them once. I didn't get that level 4 value from Blade Dance. Maybe if I get Choose that, it'll I'll be a little a bit talent. easier. Maybe I do a Naisha's Memento. Choose a talent. Choose okay. a talent. Choose a talent. So let's try Choose it again. Talent. Now I'm hitting for 627 let on the Umbral Bind pull. Now, that is really difficult. There's a lot of nuances there. Uh, I basically tripled the, almost tripled the amount of damage that the Umbral Bind pull does. And you can see how there's a lot of mechanics that might be involved in trying to get all those things to work out. There's crits everywhere. You need to get all kinds of damage trickles in. You need to activate a lot of different talents. The guilty will suffer. Umbral Bind only lasts for two and a half seconds. Right? On a base level. This gives you bonus movement speed. But during part of the movement speed, you'll be trying to damage your targets. Now, ideally, you're very fast. Fan of Knives, Auto Attack Splash, a little bit of that physical damage from Fan of Knives, which is called uh, Blade Dance. But then you got to go already, because if you don't go, then uh, you don't get the pull. Now, you can't throw out your shade early, of course. You can throw out your Spirit of Vengeance early. Right? But no matter what, that's, that's going to take some practice. That movement speed, I'm not sure how valuable that is in actually getting away. You can, of course, just use it to run away with it and to save your blink for something else. Or you, you, you throw out the shade early, then you use the movement speed to get up close and do all kinds of fan of knives, and then you blink away. We have much work so I'm just going to gonna reset my Naisha's Memento, and we'll try again. I thank you. Grubster. When I meet foreigners and they... Nope. I... Let's go. <laughs> I only teach foreigners polite expressions. Thanks for the donation. Cannot read out your question. Uh, <laughs> okay. Well done. 7.23. Wow. 7.23. We basically tripled... Uh, we basically tripled the Umbral Bind's damage. The so we reached the full threshold. Yeah, because you can get up to 200% increase. So triple is the threshold and we reached it. So if you get better at it and you get your quick combos in, 
it's uh, it's all good. Okay, now let's take a look at the Choose next level talent. 16 talent. Choose a talent. Choose a talent. Vengeful knives. For each enemy hero that Spirit of Vengeance hits, my yes, next fan of knives deals 1% maximum health as bonus damage to the enemy hero. So let's just say Choose a talent. the maximum result of this is 14%. Pass through all three Vikings and four other heroes on both ways. You get 14 hits with Rexar or even Sumuro and then Abathur copy of Sumuro and they all image split and they all group up. I guess you could get like 20 valid targets for a total of 40% max health. But realistically, it's going to be one enemy hero guaranteed on the way out, maybe one on the way back. Maybe two on the way in, two on the way out. But I don't think it's going to go a lot higher than four enemy heroes. Total. Huh? So if you just hit one. And then two. And you have this talent. Your next fan of knives does a bonus 160 damage here against this target dummy. Sweet which is capped. But you could in theory hit a lot of people. And maybe it'll do a lot of extra damage. I did a bonus 63 damage on Olaf. For a level 16 talent, unless you're massively comboing along with your team and you're hitting like five people on the way out and three on the way back, I think this is a really weak talent. It can be stronger, of course, on enemy warriors, but it seems to me at first sight, and I'm, I'm happy to revisit this later after practice, it seems a little garbage. We have much more armored assault. Do. While Maiev has more than 15 armor of any kind, all physical damage dealt is increased by 35%. Now that seems amazing because it's an easy condition. She can also be lowered in her armor because of Hanzo, Tyrande, uh, Arthas, or all kinds of different ones. <clears throat> but she has so many ways to increase it. But just remember, she's a melee assassin. And even if you have 100% uptime, 35 bonus damage on physical. And let's just assume that for the moment it's only her auto attack damage and not... They're taunting me? It's only her auto attack damage and we're not counting the level 4 blade dance, which really isn't that relevant anyway. It doesn't do a lot of damage. But let's just say, even if she were to have 100% uptime, that's still only 35%. What does Executioner do? Right? What does Executioner do? It's the same thing. 40% on CC targets. It can also sometimes have 100% uptime. And Executioner is better on ranged heroes than on melee. No, I don't think any melee have it. Still, 35%, it's a lot. I agree. It's probably the best. Choose a talent. Choose a talent. Uh, which one do we pick? Blink. So now we're hitting for 480, 480, 480, 480. Because we have that armor from our blink and because this is a perma refresh we'll always hit for 480 so long as we keep hitting I am watching. so we can have permanent uptime with these two talents that's a very impressive interaction oh execution is 30 percent okay but remember she's melee so although it's slightly better in the percentage than executioner she's melee so it's easier for a rainer to constantly proc it or for muradin than uh, than for warden Still, having seen the others, this one is highly conditional and it's really a combo talent. This one is just kind of low. And again, using your blink just for damage to get this proc, I think it's going to be Armored Assault that's the best one. My first impression. And not just by a little bit. Now, her level 20 talent is very interesting. Oh, On to the next target. My apologies. No, no, don't donation, worry. Then. What is your favorite tongue twister? In English, a Dutch or both? The, uh, in Dutch, I always say the cat crop the krullen van de trap. The cat scratches the curls out of the stair tapestry. She doesn't upgrade any of her heroic abilities. She gets three kinds of different orbs that will go to the number two hotkey or to the number one. Anyway, now it's an activatable. None of them have a timer cooldown. 
They cool down by either hitting people with spell damage in the case of Shadow Strike, by hitting people with physical damage in the case of Shadow Orb Huntress, and Shadow Orb Vengeance is reset by damaging people with your Spirit of Vengeance blink thing. So let's take a look at the first one. It resets the cooldown of Spirit of Vengeance. Swiftly. So you can throw your thing, you blink, you press this, and now you have your E again. And in order to get it back, you need to hit people with your Spirit of Vengeance. Now we're just going to toggle the cooldown. One thing I notice is that if you throw your E, you can immediately press it. doesn't really change much about it, except by the time you blink, you immediately have it again. And the cool thing is, the, the first and the second pass through of your spirit of vengeance already count towards refreshing the talent so if you go through and back and now you refresh your talent that's cool you have it back but it's now zero out of zero on the recharge whereas if you throw it you immediately press it you make sure that both pass throughs count towards it and it's two out of five already <coughs> We have much work to do. Now let's take a look Choose at a another one. Choose a talent. Shadow Orb a talent. Huntress. Activate to gain movement speed and attack speed. 40% increase. Damage people with physical damage. 10 times in order to get it back. Okay. Let the hunt begin. So one Choose cool thing talent. we can do is we say, okay, Naisha's Memento. <clears throat> we get Blade Dance. We reduce people's physical armor. We get whatever. Choose a talent. If we auto attack people, we refresh our armor. Choose a talent. We do more physical damage. Choose a talent. And we get Shadow Orb Huntress. We now have a full physical damage. So Vengeance will not what you can wait. do is, uh, let's see. <clears throat> We ignore level 7 talent for just a bit and we just look at the rest, okay? You just press 1 and 2 and then you start swinging away. You do your first auto and then you reset it with Umbral Bind. And for the rest you make use of the auto attack. It's a lot of damage. Okay, and now let's take a look at how that looks like on a hero. And our attack speed is done. There's a lot of damage you can do. It takes some time. So all the conditions are, <clears throat> this one you need to hit secondary targets, this is around my F, this is you need to pull someone, this is one you need to blink. So let's start with the pull. I will be your executioner. It's really good DPS and she's very survivable, she's got good armor. But there's other heroes that can do similar things. <clears throat> Now let's take a look Choose at the final one. Choose a talent. Shadow Choose Orb, talent. Shadow Strike. This is a this distance skill, not skill Minions shot. It's a point spread. and click. My F hype. Who do yeah. you think she will be strong and weak against? Strong and weak against? I really haven't thought about it yet. And thinking takes time. And now I just want to tutorial the hero. But just because she is an, in part at least an auto attack hero. I would say Arthas will also be an issue for her. But her immense survivability with the jump, with the teleportation, with the juke ability, the armor. She seems really solid overall. Also to go in and out and do some burst combos. Now <clears throat> is the time. So what this does is a 30% slow. It's an armor reduction of 20 for 4 seconds. And it also does a little bit of damage, 164. It lasts a total of 4 seconds, and in order to get it back, you need to deal spell damage. This is going to be your go-to if you want to do a spell 
damage burst combo. It's also still good for physical damage. Because 20 armor is 20 armor. But generally, when you reduce someone's armor, you would like to do burst damage. So let's see what kind of builds we can do in order to make that work out better. Bonds of Justice with the completed quest. 10,000 hits, by the way. It's not working properly. It's only 75 bonus damage, but okay. Let's complete this one. This, this one deals more damage for Phantom Knives. Elune's Wrath, Choose I guess. Talent. Whatever. Choose a talent. Whatever. Choose a talent. Uh, doesn't Choose really matter. Look at this one. Vengeance so vengeance. our conditions are we deal more damage with this in general. And this one is Umbral Binds Cleave damages more. And this is we need to hit two heroes. So it doesn't really work. But we can proc it on someone else first. But whatever. And uh, this one we first need to hit someone with the Spirit of Vengeance and our next fan of Knives will be stronger. On to the next target. But let's just do it like this. For the yeah. I don't think it's great burst damage. It's just cool really more not about your own place. I really think Maiev is more of a teamwork hero. She needs people to group up. She needs a warrior to initiate. She does have juke ability. But she's not like Zeratul, who can move in, do a double rewind combo, and delete someone. Area of effect damage? Very survivable, way more than Zeratul. She's more of a body that soaks damage. And she has some cool heroics. And she has good teamwork, reducing their armor, and so on. But she's more of a melee assassin with Zeratul's juke ability. With area of effect damage, that's way more survivable. No self-healing. But overall, uh, yeah, just strong spread damage and some different talent trees. I don't think every talent is equally viable as the next. But there you have it. Mayev. And I think especially level... Uh, especially level 7 and 13 have a lot of choices. But I feel like 1, 4 and 7, I would lean a little bit towards Naisha's Memento. I would lean towards Sudden Vengeance, which actually is better with the uh, this one maybe. Oh, actually, Percentage Bypasses Armor. I think Sudden Vengeance is probably the better one. I think uh, Nacious Memento is probably the better one from the three, even when you count situations. For seven, I think the best one is probably Bonds of Corruption or Ruthless Spirit. I personally lean towards Ruthless Spirit, but Bonds of Corruption, quite strong with the team. Both are viable, I think. I would say Containment Disc, probably better. Though this is really nice to Wombo Combo with your teams. So I'll say both are viable. Here I would say all are viable, but I think Fan of Knives and uh, Blink are the best type of armor. Better than Umbral Binding someone. And here, Armored Assault, I think, takes the cake. Whereas at level 20, I would say probably Shadow Orb Huntress. You can do more siege damage against buildings. Just, you're attacking a keep, you want it to happen faster, and you want to do more damage. This one is an enemy hero only, so it doesn't help with siege. This is also movement speed, so it's another type of escape, which is always good and important. This one, you get two blinks if you like. Very strong as well. But some heroes get that at level 13. For example, Sylvanas gets two haunting waves at 13. This is 20. Still, different heroes, different balance, right? But I think Huntress is probably the best, with Shadow Orb being second. Now, this is really good combo potential though, with your team. So I will definitely say, on the, in the right circumstances, or maybe it just emerges that this is the best overall in general. It comes at a pretty fair Let's range. Go. And it's nice when you see that your team is just blowing someone up. You reduce their armor by 20. And it gets slowed as well. Very reliable. So that's Warden for you. Hope you enjoyed the walkthrough.